when it comes to the treatment of intersex and trans athletes in women's sports, oftentimes they're treated similarly or conflated with each other. There are valid reasons for this for most people, but these two groups are substantially different in ways that should affect sports guidelines and media portrayal. Generally, women's sports is seen as a protected category. Generally speaking, cis men are seen as significantly stronger and faster than cis women. Cis, whenever you say it as a prefix, just means that they aren't trans. This means that anytime a woman is born different from most cis women in some way, often their womanhood is questioned and their ability to compete in sports is challenged. Even just presenting more masculine can lead people to question whether or not you should be allowed to compete in some situations. Generally, there are two ways that a woman can physically stray from a normal cis woman's body, either through being intersex or being transgender. Transgender women are typically born in a body that appears to be assigned male at birth, but they are extremely uncomfortable being born into that body, so they take steps to change it to be more in line with a typical female body. This is done through things like hormone replacement therapy, which for trans women involves taking a medication to block the creation of testosterone along with taking estrogen supplements. This causes the trans woman to go through a female puberty and this reverts a lot of the things done in their initial male puberty. Generally, after a few years on hormone replacement therapy, most trans female athletes fall in line performance-wise with most cis female athletes. The important thing to take away from here is that trans women are already taking medication to alter their hormone levels and they take tests every 3 to 12 months to make sure their hormone levels are within normal cis female levels. Intersex people are a different story. They're born somewhere between male and female, but they generally heavily lean one way or another. Any number of factors could lead to someone being labeled intersex, and these things don't need to be visible to the naked eye, as they could be differences in like genetics, hormone levels, or internal genital structure. However, a woman could appear to be a cis woman, live as a cis woman her entire life, only to find out after years of competing at a high level that she was born with a high level of testosterone being produced by her body naturally. The key takeaway here is that intersex people are not generally taking medication to alter their hormones, and they have not necessarily taken any steps to alter their assigned sex at birth. Oftentimes, the media will frame intersex and transgender people in the same light, implying that intersex women are assigned male at birth and are invading women's sports. Intersex people often don't find out they're intersex until they get tested while competing. Both are pushing the bounds of what wider society considers to be a woman, which is why they're often confused for each other. However, the way each group got there is completely different. Oftentimes, transgender women have restrictions on the level of testosterone they can have in their body while competing, along with having to be on hormone replacement therapy for around two years. This is a reasonable guideline in my opinion, as the benefits of testosterone and male puberty are generally mostly gone after two years in most trans women. Whenever there are guidelines made for intersex athletes, it seems like they try to apply the same guidelines that are used for transgender women. This is unfair and way out of line, as making intersex women take testosterone-blocking medications to alter their bodies when they aren't already taking any sort of sex-altering medications is insane. These medications do have negative side effects and do affect the athlete's body in a way that might be distressing to them. The Olympics seem to have good guidelines on transgender and intersex athletes, having guidelines that seek to not exclude people based on their gender identity, expression, and or sex variations. However, these are the guidelines that excluded Castor Semenya, a South African runner who was the Olympic champion in the 800 meter dash in 2016 and 2012. This was done through the IAAF, as each sport in the Olympics has a federation that creates their own rules. The regulations only applied to five events, including the 800 meter dash. The IAAF's rules for running were changed in 2019 to disallow athletes whose testosterone was above a certain level within a year of competing. This applied to all women athletes equally. Also, the guideline no longer legally recognizes trans female athletes as female and require additional proof of being a woman to be submitted beforehand. And this is a crazy amount of overhead to place on intersex athletes especially, as they're required to change their bodies for an extended period of time 
to fit these guidelines. In conclusion, intersex people shouldn't be put under as harsh of guidelines when it comes to hormone levels as transgender athletes, as they aren't already on medication to change their hormone levels and are not wanting to change aspects of their sex. A lot of the guidelines around transgender women competing in sports are also really restrictive and unfair, 